ready to go racing with the 450 main. Three races to the championship. Let's go trackside. Here's Jenny. Hey, Ralph, thank you very much. Well, yes, two red plates tonight. And in talking to Ryan Dungey and Eli Tomek, here's what both are thinking. As for Ryan Dungey, he's focusing on intensity and getting as much points as he can. He told me, I cannot deny that Eli Tomek has been fast. I need to be faster. And as for Eli Tomek, erasing that 29-point deficit to get that red plate, he said, yeah, I'm excited, and I'm going to do something about it. Daniel, what do you got? Well, I'm standing in front of the gate right now, and sometimes you guys might wonder, why do the guys pick the gates that they pick? Well, behind the gate, they can do all the work they want on the rut, make it the way they like it. But in front of the gate, those ruts get deep, they get chopped, they got rocks. So guys will make their choice based on that rut right there. That's why you see Ryan Dungey and Eli Tomac spread out right now. They're not afraid of each other. They just found two ruts that they like. They're going to try to execute, get the start, and get going on this main event. We asked you earlier who we thought or who you thought would win this championship. 67% of you think it's going to be Tomac. Well, the run to that title begins right here at round 15, believe it or not, because we only have three races to go, beginning with tonight's event. They're tied at the top of the point standings. They have five riders in between them on the gate. And the epic battle begins right now. Yeah, the strength of Dungey is his consistency. Strength of Tomac is his speed. But the key in this latter part of the season has been the starts. And look at the gate picks they have. Dungey is right next to uh, what we call the doghouse there in the middle. And all the way about uh, seven positions over, you have Tomac in the side. And looking at both their uh, ruts after the gate. There's the board. Two riders, three races, time to top the points. Drop the gate, let's fight for the championship. Tomac's buried in the pack. Dungey with a much better start. Bogle gets the whole shot on the 19. Baggett and Anderson, both in front of Dungey, who's in fourth. Third, gonna be now, second. Dungey quickly moving through. He got the start he needed, just like he did in his heat race. Dungey now just has to get around Bogle, and he'll be well on his way to his third win of the year. Tomac comes across the stripe. 15th. Oh, my. Dungey already battling for the win here, trying to get around Bogle to grab the lead. We saw earlier this year at Daytona and Seattle. Dungey in the lead, crowd to their feet. Boy, this is just what the doctor ordered for the Red Bull KTM rider. Oh, ho, ho. Anderson Man. almost moves out. Oh, he sure did, Jeff. Way off the back of that white Husqvarna. Second hole shot of the year for Bogle. And here's Tomac. Already up to 10th. Trying to Tickle. get around Tickle. And he sails it there. Oh, look at, watch this. Barsha, oh, no, not quite close enough. So Tomac. He's been great at working his way through the pack this season, but no normally Dungey wasn't out front. The last time this happened was Atlanta. Tomac was able to work his way to second and Dungey won the race. We saw it twice this year where Dungey had a terrible start. 17th at Daytona, 19th at Seattle, and he worked his way all the way up to fourth on both of those nights. Here's Tomac on that number three, started in 15th after the gate drop. Right now, he's up to 10th. How far can he get? Oh, he's got a tickle boxes him out. And Muscan, Dungey's Tomac, is just behind Tomac right now. Here he goes for the pass. One advantage Tomac might have here tonight, Jeff, is that we're racing here in Salt Lake City where the lap times have been so quick oh. that we're pretty sure we're going to have a lot of laps. And those extra laps tonight might make a huge difference for Tomac. We're thinking 27, 28 laps. And then depending on where we go to zeros on the clock, we could get an extra lap there before we get the one to go. So that could really be a huge advantage for Eli Tomac. It tonight. is, it is. And you saw Tomac right there. When Muscan was in his way, Tomac just muscled him out of the way and picked off Tickle, two riders in two turns. Let's go down to Daniel for more on Eli. 
Eli's going to have to get creative, guys. He's got the speed and the whoops for sure. He's got a couple spots in the track where he's been able to make passes, but he's going to have to be creative if he wants to find his way around each and every one of these guys. We see him in the whoops. It's been a, a strong point for him all night, but he's going to have to find other lines if he wants to get through fast because this race, even though it will be longer, he's still got to move them, make the moves quick so he can get himself in a second, make a run at Dungey. It's time to get creative, Eli. Jeff, this could be where that training in high altitude comes into play for Tomac with those extra laps. Other guys are going to get tired, including our race leader, Dungy. That could be a huge advantage for Tomac, who right now sits in ninth, and the way they run, he's 13 points down to Dungy. Yeah, and last time around, Dungy was 9.7 seconds off of the lead. I'm sorry, Tomac, 9.7 seconds off of the lead. Now he makes the move on Brayton. He's going to have a little bit of clear track. Tomac comes by in eight. 10.8 seconds behind, so he's losing time because he doesn't have a clear track. I believe that Tomac has the ability to turn the fastest laps of anyone on the track, including Dungey. But as you saw, the early part of this race, with all these tight turns like where they're coming up to right now, things just get really messy. And right now, every one of these positions he gains is worth the point. That last one, getting around Brayton, put him 12 back. Now, if he can get around Millsaps, he'll get another one. Here he comes inside. Got it. Gets around Davey as Dungy continues to lead. And we wait to see where is Tomac. How far back is he? There's Reed, there's Baggett, and there's the gap. 11 now, the point differential between the top two in the championship. And even though Tomac had to make up uh, or had to make some passes, he picked up two tenths of a second on the lead. Now look, he's got a little more clear track, and as he works his way closer to the front, which he most certainly uh, should and will, um, let's see if he gets his lap time down. Last time around, Tomac had the fastest lap with a 45.9, and that was six tenths of a second quicker now. Dungey, who was your third fastest. He's closing in on Chad Reed former two-time champion of this series. Okay, just crosses 9.9 .9 seconds behind the lead. Oh, Baggett looked like he was really muscling the number four. Here Look goes Tomac inside a read. There's wow. another point. And quickly, he'll have Baggett just in front of him and then Bogle. So if he can get around Baggett, he's back into the top five. And Dungey doing what Jeff, I felt he really needed to do here tonight. And that was get a win. Yeah, no doubt. Look at this. He's got points right there in front of him. Tomac now starting to attack. Starting Locking to find some in. lines on the track. Okay, crosses the line. Tomac in sixth place. 9.5 seconds by, still the fastest lap of anyone out there. And a ton of time, just inside of 14 minutes Whoa. and one lap. Bogle with the issues, he goes down, and Tomac gets two riders just like that, and the gap is now seven between Dungey and Tomac. Okay. And plenty of time left to go here tonight in Salt Lake City. And his teammate, the 33 of Josh Grant on Monster Energy Kawasaki, as he comes through the mechanics area. Would there be any team orders? Let Tomac by, make it easy for him. Yes, but Grant is in position for his first podium since New Orleans in 2012. Will he be anxious to hand it over? We've been told there's no team orders with the Red Bull KTM squad. How about the Monster Energy Kawasaki organization? The gap to first, 8.3 seconds. Tomac absolutely flying. Here's he goes oh, for a there pass. He goes. And now no team orders necessary. Tomac just dominating the competition right now. Five. The gap again now between Tomac and Dungey. One pass gave him two more points. And now he'll try to see if he can catch Jason Anderson. Oh, man. <laughs> what a championship fight this is. Tomac was 10th on the first lap. Going into the first turn, there was only one rider behind him. He absolutely blew his gate. He was so late off the gate. But his speed that he's had lately has been so dominant. Will it be enough to keep the red plate when he leaves Salt Lake City? Do you believe it was just a timing issue? Oh, look, there's Bogle in the mechanics God, area. He's bombing. Was it just a timing issue? 
for Eli in the gate? You think he just yeah yeah home? he was he was just laid off the gate. He, he he crept just a little bit and then he held up and when he held up the gate dropped and but it's his strength streaks. we talked about it the tail of the red tapes speed has been Tomax strong point and he is showing it right now why he's said six wins out of the last eight races with two seconds he's less than six seconds now behind Dungey who continues to watch creep start. just a little bit and then he held up and look at that I mean it was only ironically it was into Knapp and Muscan who's typically great off the gate both riders having a rough time and Dungey's had a clear track Tomac has picked up Another six tenths of a second on Dungey. Now remember, in the heat race, Dungey got the whole shot, was well up in front, and Tomac ran him down, but Dungey held him off. Now, as you see timing and scoring showing just five seconds between Dungey and Tomac, as Tomac closes in on Anderson. Well, and that's Anderson having a great ride here tonight on Rockstar Energy House Marta. Remember, he's a training partner with Ryan Dungey. They've been working together at the training facility down in Florida. What will do? What role will he play in the outcome of this main event? Anderson's got his hands full, and Jeff, we're inside of ten and a half minutes we're plus one lap. We got all kinds of time if and when Tomac clears Anderson to see if he can run down Dungey. I mean, Tomac is just absolutely amazing right now. His ability to pick off the riders. It was a pretty messy first couple laps for him. Uh, lots of traffic. And now he is just dominating uh, the lap times here. Last time around a 45.5. Cuts by at a 45.7 to Dungey's 46.5. And actually, Anderson had a 46.3, so he's catching Dungey too. Here we go. Here's Tomac. And he goes. Oh, it's still tripled out of that turn. That this guy's impressive. on fire. That is impressive. He is just throwing everything at it. And that pass was worth two points. The crowd's on their feet. It is now three between Dungey and Tomac. Less than nine and a half minutes to go. And one lap after that, can Eli catch Dungey? Well, and if you think Ryan Dungey doesn't know what's happening, by the sound of the crowd back there, you'd be kidding yourself. He knows exactly what's going on right now. He knows that if you're Ryan Dungey, he has got to stay focused and count on Tomac to make a mistake because nobody can match the Kawasaki rider's speed. Daniel Tomac is incredibly hungry. He's on another level, guys, and this kind of mimics what we've seen for two months. Ryan Dungey riding protective of his points lead. In this main event, he's been protective of his lines. Eli Tomac is riding the way he has now for how many weeks? Aggressive, wide open, taking chances, doing everything he can do, and it's paying off. He's made the passes that he's needed to get in a second, and now he's got Dungey in his sights, just like the championship this race is mimicking. Carlos Rivera, the mechanic for Ryan Dungey. For Eli Tomac, it's Brian Kranz. We talked about the mechanics of the 250 West Championship fight. Jeff, those two men are gonna be integral here in how this fight plays out tonight because they need to encourage their riders to hang on and get the job done. Well, the lead right now, 2.6 seconds. Once again, Tomac, fastest rider on the track, still in the 45s. He had a 45.4 to Dungey's 46.2. Jeff, we're in the point of the race, too, where the altitude's going to come into play. Eight minutes and a lap or so to go. So much time, Ralph. That so is a much time, ton of time. And let's not forget, throughout his career, Tomac has had a tendency to ride in, in a, at a very high level. And when you're pushing the limits and pushing the edge, make some mistakes. So that's the question right now. Dungey's consistency versus Tomac's speed. Look Which will prevail here tonight. Oh, oh. man, he is oh, just a little going luck. for it. A little luck. He is just going for it. Now, take a look at the riding position of these two riders as they attack the rhythm lanes. Look at Tomac sitting up on the front of that bike. He is just in full maximum attack mode as he closes in on Dungey. Jenny, what does it say on the pit boards? 
Well, I'm looking right now at Brian Kranz, who's working with Tomac. It says smart. He's been talking about being smart and being consistent and to breathe. And as for Ryan Dungey, it has been a consistent you can from Carlos Rivera breathe as well, guys. This positive reinforcement for Dungey, but look at Tomac. Oh, oh man. man, is he fast through there. Tomac is on him. Now, what does Dungey have left? How much is he willing to risk? We see that Tomac is willing to hang it all out there. How far will Dungey go to protect this lead? And how about the lap traffic and the blue flags here tonight? Well, the crowd has been on their feet this whole main event. They know what's on the line. They are stoked to have Monster Energy Supercross back in Salt Lake City, and they have been treated to one great main event in the 250 West, and now the premier class, the best Supercross riders in the world. One started first, one started well outside the top 10, and they find themselves together once again. Dungy jumps through the woods. Tomac just attacks him and closes in, goes inside. Oh, they were part of bar, and Dungy knows his title rival is right on his exhaust pipe. Five Boy. minutes and a lap to go. And I can't tell you if you're Ryan Dungey how difficult it is to stay focused and to stay. Uh oh, there it is. Tomac's there, but he oh. makes a mistake and Dungey comes back. Dungey with a look over his shoulder. He's inside, takes him wide, slows him down. Tomac's such smart riding, Ralph. He knew that Dungey had the opportunity to go in and push him wide. Tomac just was patient and that Tomac is confident that he can get this done. Tomac again. That's been his oh, spot. He slows him down, takes the inside away. Now, can he disappear on Dungey, or can Ryan mount an attack back? Dungey looks over his shoulder, looks to see where, I believe that was Tickle, lap rider. And with that move, Tomac moves in front of Dungey in the points by the same amount that's on his number plate. Yeah, and so if, if I'm Ryan Dungey, okay, I whole shot at the race. Tomac has caught me and passed me. Now, I gotta follow his lines. I gotta pick it up because if, if he drops back five, 10 seconds right here, that's gonna be so defeating. That will deflate the champ. Dungey's got to an answer right here and be able to hang with Tomac. Oh, we got a rider down. Looks like Malcolm Stewart. Yep. Yellow flags are out. They both get through clear. I mean, what a performance by Eli Tomac. I mean, he just reached out and taken I mean, away from him. There was only two riders behind him going into the first turn. It was Muscan and Intignap. And he has just absolutely dominated the field here of the best riders in the sport. Here's our Toyota moment of the race. And it's not just one, Jeff. It's <laughs> Eli's ride to the Multiple. front of the field. Well, here we go. Toyota moment of the race. Horrible start for Tomac. See right here, tries to go in, and he's being ultra conservative there behind, behind uh, Millsaps. Here's where he makes the pass for third. He makes so many passes there at the end of the whoops. Same spot. Passes for second, moves Anderson out of the way. And of course, where's his spot at tonight? Corner after the whoops, this is for the lead. Now Tomac's got three minutes plus a lap to keep it together, keep it on two wheels and win this main event, which would be his ninth of the season. This is a battle for position here. Grant and Mooskin. Muskan was last in the first turn. He's fifth on the track right now. Yeah, they're fighting over fourth right now. Jeff, while we watch this, I want you to hear this stat. Dungey led the first 18 laps here tonight. This would be the third time this year Dungey has lost the lead and didn't win if he does not pull it off tonight. He led the first eight laps at San Diego, lost to Roxon, lost the first, led the first 16 laps at Oakland, and lost to Tomac. That'd be a huge difference in the championship right there. Can be. Oh, that's going to be close. There, Buscan almost thought he was going to jump in the back of Grant. Grant trying to nail down a season best fourth. He's been, uh, Grant has just been awesome here. I'm not sure what the difference has been, but he won the heat race, qualified second, 
Now he's fending off the charge here by Marvin Muscan. He said he felt really good earlier today when we talked to him after the heat race, and Jeff, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, and, and if you're Bruce Search from that. head of racing for Kawasaki, Dan Fahey, team manager for Kawasaki, so far so good. You've got your fingers, your toes, everything crossed oh, man. that both your riders can uh, uh, manage this last couple of minutes. Tomac, less than two minutes and one to go. Christian Coming Craig to the line. Out. Big question now, Daniel, is going to be when will he cross the line when the clocks go to zero? How many extra laps is he going to have to do tonight? Well, I think as long as he stays consistent in this section right here in the whoops, I think he's got it. If you're watching this race, take out a pen and a notepad and watch Eli Tomac through the whoops. He commits early. He wheelies up over the front of the first whoop, puts his uh, front tire down on the second whoop. That carries the momentum, keeps him on the very tip tops. And even though guys are swapping left and right, if you keep the momentum early, you can power through. Perfect execution. That's how it's done right there. Yeah, Daniel, that's so on point because he over jumps that little double and then that allows him to bounce over that first whoop where that big hole is. Great point, Daniel. Tungy, by the way, 5.4 seconds behind Tomac as we continue to watch the fight for fourth between Grant and Muskin. Don't forget, next week we're on Fox, 4.30 p.m. Eastern with our pre-race show from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, where Eli Whoa. Tomac looks like he'll have a three-point lead over Dungey. Well, you Moose saw can't. Moose can't get into the side of the Kawasaki and Grant. He's not done yet. Moose can't comes back. Oh, man, they were part of our there. Grant is hanging on. He had a fifth two races ago in St. Louis. He's trying to better that position here. He's that season bat fourth, but Moose can't. Now he's got to move on him. Got, this, got the line. Great battle with these two. Eli's over the line. He's going to have to do two laps, Jeff. He didn't get there. Clocks are going to go to zero any second now. Well, there it is. Well, the fans here in Ricycle Stadium and watching around the world, they, they don't mind seeing more of this racing. This has been some uh, pretty fantastic main events we've seen here tonight. How huge is this in the championship fight? It's well, only I mean, three we, points, but mentally, how big is it? Yeah, I mean, it was just such an impressive ride, but I mean, we still have two more races to go and anything can happen. Uh, but but that was a uh, a big mental victory so far for Eli Tomac and what a confidence booster. And he's got one to go here with the white flag out. If he can keep it on two wheels and not have any bad luck here, uh, he's just going to leave here on cloud nine. Right now, six seconds up on Dungy. I mean, think about it. At one point, Tomac was 10.8 seconds uh, behind Dungy on lap four, and now he's six seconds up. Jeff, think of it like this. After lap one, Dungy was first, Tomac was 10th. A 14-point gap. Now, Tomac leads by three points. That's a 17-point swing in the points just tonight alone. Don't forget at one point, Dungey was up 29 on Tomac. Tonight, it's Eli Tomac who lights the candles in Salt Lake and takes a three-point lead in the championship over Ryan Dungey. Cool. That was, uh, that was something. That, the type, the zone that Eli Tomac is in very few riders get, I, I believe, to ride where you're that dominant. You're seeing something special happen right here with the rider out of Colorado. That was an epic performance by Eli Tomac. He's gone. Start statistics, who needs those? I don't care. <laughs> wow. That might have been a championship performance. We'll talk to Eli, Dungey, and the rest when we come back to Salt Lake.